Good morning, everyone. This is Gina at Art of Skin Care, and today we're going to be talking about blackheads. And in particular, I'm going to talk to you about the kind of blackheads that get really stuck in the skin, little hard bumps, and you try and extract and try and extract and it won't come out. And I'm going to help you with those today. We're going to work on softening those up so that we can extract them. Now, something you need to know about blackheads is that people who are really oily can get blackheads. And sometimes people with really oily skin, their skin extracts easier because the oils are flowing so nicely, but that's not always the case. Sometimes you can have very oily skin, but still get very glued in blackheads, especially around the cheek area and the chin area. And now the other kind of people, the dry skin people can also get blackheads because they're not producing enough oil and the oil they're producing is very sticky and it gets stuck in the pores and it dries up really hard down in there and it can be very hard to get out. So we're going to, first thing I want to do is address what happens internally. Internally with blackheads, we've got to be having a diet that's high in omega fatty acids. So, you know, increase your fish intake, your olive oil. We have some supplements that our clients take that really help to um, loosen up that sticky fatty acid in the skin. One of them is pure encapsulations. It's our one omega. We also have OMG the great, omega the great, which is excellent. And then for people who don't like to swallow pills, we also have these gummies. These are not sweet gummies. Um, they're very neutral in flavor. They're not fishy, but they're in a kind of a flat, um, kind of gooey, gummy shape, not gooey, but gummy shape. And so even if, if you don't even want to chew them, they're very easy to slip right down your throat. If you just put them in your mouth with a little water, they're very slippery and they slip right down in there. So this can be a good alternative for some people. It's called the EPA DHA gummy. Very good for the brain and very good for anyone who has foggy thinking or a little ADD, um, anything like that. These, um, all of these have that perfect ratio of EPA to DHA for brain health, as well as for uh, uh, reducing that stickiness in the cell. So when you have a blackhead, what happens is this, the sebum gets very sticky down underneath the skin and it just holds on to the dead skin cells and stays there. Um, two things that we generally use for blackheads that I use, I like to use something with glycolic acid in it. Glycolic acid is going to help to exfoliate those surface cells that can cover the blackhead. And then I like to use retinol. Retinol goes down into the pore and actually helps to loosen up that sticky sebum. So they're a really good combination for anybody that gets blackheads. Now, a lot of people think they need, well, and if you go to the grocery store or the drugstore, you're going to see a lot of serums with salicylic acid in it. And a lot of people think that salicylic acid is what you need to get rid of blackheads. But for myself, for the founders of Face Reality, we have all found that salicylic acid actually dries up the pore a bit too much. And so the um, blackhead actually gets stuck more inside the skin and it's hard to exfoliate. So if you're going to use a salicylic serum, it should be combined with retinol. And we actually have an amazing uh, retinol and salicylic serum from Rhonda Allison. It's called salicylic serum. And that one is actually really excellent for blackheads because it's going to loosen it up and loosen up the surface. And then that retinol is going to go down in there and help flush out that sticky sebum. When you use that salicylic serum, when you wake up the next morning, your skin looks so nice and smooth. It's like Barbie skin. It's really amazing. So we're going to be incorporating that into today's facial. So for our facial today, I'm going to be showing you Rhonda Allison's Hydro Glow Kit. I got inspired to show you guys this because so many people would think the Hydro Glow Kit is just for somebody with dry skin or aging skin. And really, it's for everybody. They uh, almost all of my favorite ingredients for smoothing the texture of an aging skin or a rough texture are in here, as well as the things that I use for de-sticking those really sticky blackheads and bumps under the skin. So we're going to be using this kit today. It's called Hydro Glow, and it is a free gift with purchase at Art of Skin Care. So when you make a purchase, 
is it Ben 125, 150, 150? <laughs> Sorry. When you make a purchase of 150 or more, this is automatically added to your cart so that you can get it and give yourself my Christmas gift to you guys is this little home facial that you can do. Now inside the kit, there is a little card. So I'm going to pull out the products. I'm going to show you that there is a card in here once I get it out. And the card gives you the exact instructions for how to do this treatment as a hydrating facial. You'll be using your step one will be to cleanse, step two to use the enzyme, step three, put on the mask, remove that. And then step four is to use the glow serum that's here, Glow Time, Grapeseed Glow, which is a wonderful acne safe light oil that smells amazing. And you can put pat that on as your moisturizer. Um, some ways that you can um, even boost this a little bit is by adding that glow serum into your mask, your finishing mask, and that'll even add a little bit more moisture. So this is the recipe for that Hydro Glow. But today I'm going to show you how to use these products to do a facial to de-stick the blackheads that get stuck in the skin. And the order of products is going to be a little bit different. And I'll have it below in the description. So you'll see we're actually going to use the mask before the enzyme. Because if you're an esthetician, you would know that when you do a lot of extractions, you often have afterwards this little bits of skin, little bits of skin that are all over the place. And so what we like to do is use the enzyme after we do the extractions because it's going to digest away any leftover skin cells that are hanging out around the pore and on the skin. So let's get started. So you will need to do this facial. You'll need this kit. You will need Rhonda Allison's Skin Smoothing Gel. This is a lactic acid and glycolic acid gel. We're going to use this to boost our cleanser so that it really softens up those blackheads. And you can also use this as a PM serum for um, smoothing out rough textured skin or helping to loosen and dislodge. Um, I just slowed down. I'm talking too fast for you guys. It'll loosen and dislodge those blackheads. So you could actually alternate. You could use skin smoothing gel one night and then use that salicylic serum that I told you about the next night. And then maybe the third night, just have a night of using your nourishing, maybe your um, neogenesis skin serum or something like that where you're just nourishing the skin. So you could do a cycle like that. The cycle would be skin smoothing gel. The next night would be your salicylic serum. And then the next night or two would be your neogenesis skin serum. And that way you have a nice rotation going with your exfoliation and keeping your pores really nice. So you will need for this facial that skin smoothing gel. You will need to choose a retinol serum. Maybe you already have one at home. Today I grabbed retinol supreme and I grabbed stem cell A. Stem cell A is a retinaldehyde serum. So this is for the more sensitive skin and reactive skin. And it also works great for blemishes and for blackheads in the skin. Um, if you want a little bigger guns, you go with retinol supreme or you go with the salicylic serum that I told you about. Of course, I'm going to finish off with a little bit of sunscreen because I have to go out and about for the rest of the day. And I'm going to use my Eclipse in the tinted version. So let's get started. I'm going to grab a head wrap. These are in our reward center this week, this month. And we're so excited about them. Ashley designed them for us. These are actually say our name on them, our skincare. So be sure to check the reward center when you are checking out and find some of the wonderful goodies that we put in there for you for this holiday season. So I'm getting my head. I love putting these on. I always, and as I age, I start to see my grandmother. So my grandmother always wore a swimming cap or a cap like this when she showered because she always got her hair done. Once a week, she'd get her hair done in those nice poofy <laughs> designs. But now when I see myself in one of these, I see my grandmother, my grandma Pearl, and she was an Avon lady. So one of the original Avon ladies, and it's kind of, she. I feel like she kind of gave me my, my genes, my desire, my love for skincare. So grandma Pearl, thank you. Okay, so what we're gonna do to start is we're gonna grab the gentle cleanser. Now a couple other things you're gonna need. You're gonna need some saran wrap, and mostly you just need saran wrap, but if you also have them, 
these clean skin club towelettes. These work really well in my step two that I'm gonna do. So step one here is we're going to get out the gentle cleanser. I'm just gonna put a couple pumps in my hand and then I grab my skin smoothing gel. So what I'm doing is I'm taking a basic creamy cleanser, milky cleanser, and I'm adding glycolic acid to it. So I'm gonna put in two or three pumps. Two pumps is probably fine. I always use more than I need. And now I'm going to massage this onto my skin. It smells so good. It's one of my favorite cleansers. So you're gonna to wanna to do a really nice cleanse. It may feel a little stingly and tingly because glycolic acid does that. And we've kind of brightened up this cleanser by adding in that glycolic acid. So be sure and do a nice cleanse, massage, really work it into those areas where you might tend to get some glued in pores, glued in blackheads, or anywhere that you have a rougher skin. Like a lot of us, once we hit our 60s, 70s, 80s, this skin right here gets really rough because it doesn't exfoliate fast enough. So massage it in really well there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab Saran Wrap. So I'm going to put Saran Wrap across my forehead. This works really well before you get into a warm bath because a warm heat will really help kick it up. But don't have to do that. This one, normally you could do one piece and just go, no, <laughs> you can't. You wouldn't be able to breathe. I would say you could do one piece and go all the way down, but you can't been a little while since I've done this on myself. Okay, so then my next piece goes over my nose. I'm gonna press it down. Make sure that I've got the saran wrap on those problems areas. If you get a little blackheads over here, make sure they're covered. And then I'm gonna leave my mouth uncovered because I need to talk. <laughs> I can't stop talking. So normally you could go here and that would be really good for me to do because I tend to get little blackheads going in this direction where these pores get a little saggy right there. So I'm just going to do the bottom half of my face so I can keep talking, get my chin covered. And now I can leave this on for about five minutes, but I want to really heat it up and get a bit of sweat going, get the skin warm. So if you have a steamer, a hot towel steamer, you could wrap your hot towel around your face and lay back and relax and just lay there till the towel cools. I don't, um, I didn't heat up my towel today because I want to show you how to do it. If you're at home and you don't have a hot towel steamer, you can get really hot water, fill up a bowl, which is what I have down here. I'm reaching down and I'm putting my lush cloths in there. So now I'm going to wring out my lush cloth. And what I can do is just lay lay my lush cloth on the skin. It's going to warm it and it's going to create some suction so that the glycolic acid and oily cleanser get pulled down into the skin to loosen up those pores. Because what our goal is, is to turn that sebum that's stuck in the pores into butter. So it just flows right out. For most people, this facial treatment will be enough to get that loosened up. If it does not, then you're going to want to do what I talked about earlier. For the next week, you're going to want to use that skin smoothing gel, then use your salicylic serum every other night and do that for a week or so, and then do this facial again. And likely you'll be able to get out those stuck spots then. Never overpick the skin. If you can't get it out with gentle movements, and I'll show you guys how to do that, then save it and try again another time or go to a professional, go to an esthetician and have her get it out for you. You don't want to leave a glued in blackhead there for too long. It gets bigger and bigger and it stretches out that pore and then you have a hole in your face. We have all, as estheticians, we've all seen that happen. So now I'm getting it, I'm putting that cloth back into the hot water and I'm taking out a fresh one. Now this is hot water that I took out of my instant hot water sink at, in my kitchen. So it's really nice and hot. Now if you're at home, you can just relax, lay back, relax. 
Do a couple rounds of the hot towels. And then sit up and we'll move on to the next step. So you could do this a little longer. I'm abbreviating it because I'm not going to, I don't want to sit here forever with you guys. And now just gently lift off all the plastic. There we go. I'm going to grab a lush cloth to remove the cleanser. Okay, feels nice and clean. Feels like I have all the cleanser off. It's not slippery, foamy. Now, it does feel active though. My skin, I can tell I've had a little glycolic acid on it. It's a little tingly here and there. That was probably because I put three pumps that I should have just done one pump, but it doesn't matter. I know it's not too strong for me. If you're doing this for the first time, just do one pump. Okay, next step is you're going to grab your grapeseed antioxidant mask. Now, of all the products in this kit, this is the one product that's not acne safe. But if your acne just is comedones, just, you know, blackheads, um, bumps under the skin that don't make whiteheads, no pustules, you're going to be fine with this. I use this all the time in my treatments for people with blackheads and we have no problems with breakouts. But you, if you have pustular inflamed acne, this probably won't be the best one for you. So then stick it in the stocking for one of your, your loved ones and they will love this mask. Okay, I'm gonna put the mask to my little bowl. Grab a brush. And now I know this seems crazy to put this mask on before you do the enzyme, but in my years of practicing as an esthetician, I discovered that I could do, I would put this mask on after I tried to do extractions and, you know, with people with really glued in pores, I'm really good at extractions, but if they're just glued and stuck in, it was really impossible to get them out. But then I found that when I used this mask as their finishing mask, all of a sudden when I took it off, I could do all their extractions and the sebum just melted out like butter. So through trial and error, I discovered this technique that I'm sharing with you guys. This mask is also excellent as a finishing mask. And so for anyone that has just a rough textured skin or wants to firm their skin, wants their skin to be absolutely beautiful before going to an event, this is the mask for you guys. Um, I like to see results. Every time I do a facial, if the skin doesn't look great when I'm finished, I'm not happy. And this was one of those uh, masks that I could always use if I really wanted to see that skin just soften up and smooth out and that heavy texture just gone. It's a wonderful, wonderful mask. Thank you, Rhonda Allison, for developing this mask. It's loaded with antioxidants. So the other thing you need to know if you're getting blackheads, even if they're not glued in, maybe you don't even have blackheads, maybe just in your pores, you can see that the oil looks dark. And that means that the oil is oxidizing because we all have oil. We have to have oil, but we can help it not to oxidize so fast by using antioxidant serums. And this antioxidant mask also helps with that. All right, I've got my skin well coated. So you could do one of two things at this point. You could do Saran Wrap again on your skin. We have a little bit left in my spoon. I don't want to waste any. I'm going to put it on my lips. <laughs> I love this stuff. Okay. So you can put Saran Wrap on at this point, or you can use the Clean Skin Club Dry Wipes. I'm going to grab a couple of those. And I'll show you guys how to use these. Actually, let's see. Can't tear there. These work really well for you guys at home. It's not going to work so well for me because I want to be able to see you guys while I'm talking. So first I'm going to put one on the forehead. You could even cut it and make it into the sizes you want. 
And then this one I can breathe through. So I can go ahead and cover. You can cover your nose with this guy and you won't have a problem. Let's go this direction, stretch, stretch. Lay it on here. And now I'm all set to either wrap. <laughs> I've got to uncover my mouth to talk to you guys. So at that point, once I have those on, you are all ready to wrap your face in that hot steam towel. If you have a hot steam towel, re-wet it, wrap it on, or you can do what I'm going to do right now. And this is too hard for me to do and demonstrate for you guys because it doesn't stick on as well as the saran wrap. So let me grab my saran wrap again. But I use those all the time at home and it works great at home, but at home I'm just laying them on, relaxing, wrapping on my hot towel and I'm good to go. Doesn't work when you're sitting up and trying to do a live demonstration. So I'm just going to get my mask worked back into the skin by using my saran wrap. Getting it all around the pores of the nose. There we go. And let's do that chin area. And then once again, grabbing my hot towels, my hot lush cloth, and wring it out. And I just use it as a compress on the skin. I'm gonna add a bit more hot water to my Towels. There we go. I love hot towels. There's nothing better than hot towels. And even hot lush cloths will do the trick if you don't have a towel cabbie. I have heard of some people using a crock pot to heat their towels. So if you have a crock pot and you get these kind of hand towels, you could do that at home with a crock pot. Just be super careful because the crock pot is going to get your towels pretty hot. And you don't want to burn yourself. So pull them out with some tongs, cool them off a little bit, and then wrap your face. I'm teaching all these tricks to be able to do, to be your own esthetician. Oh, this feels so good. So at home, you just want to lay back and let these set on your skin. If you're doing one hot towel wrap, just let it sit there till the wrap completely cools. If you're doing the Lush Cloths, just do it two or three times, rewarming your Lush Cloths. I don't want to stop. It smells good and it feels so good. But the facial must go on. So let's go. I'm going to pull off my occlusion. So what I'm doing when I'm using those cloths or I'm using the saran wrap, I'm including the skin so that it really drives the masks and things that I have on my skin down into the skin. Okay, let's grab, well, now I have my nice clean skin club cloth. So I'm gonna use those. I love these cloths. Sometimes I even make one cloth last for two days because I'll let it just dry out. They dry super fast. You just let it dry in your sink over the faucet. I use them for body cleaning, just everything, everywhere. They're great. See how nice and smooth my skin looks? Can you guys tell online? I don't know, but the dream mask, that is the dream mask right there. So, from here, what you can do is, I'm gonna show you how to do extractions at home. So one thing, number one, never use one of those metal comedone extractors. That's a good way to break capillaries on your skin and really damage your skin. We use them very rarely. Even many estheticians are very, use them very rarely. What I use is tissue. So I'm going to use two pieces of tissue. So I've got one out and I folded it into my triangle. Let me get one more. Fold it into a triangle. Some people can use two Q-tips to do extractions. That can work. I just like to be hands-on. So once I have my triangle, I'm going to lay my finger in here. 
like this. And then I fold this part that goes over the finger down. And then I wrap this around my finger like that. So I've kind of got some padding there protecting my skin from my fingernails. So again, I wrapped it that way. It's just, let's see if I can explain it. So I've got my finger going in between there. I wrap it down one. So I've made a triangle again with my finger in the center. I'm bending it down so that the I have a nice point there. And then I'm wrapping the tissue around so I can hold it with my other fingers. From here, I can come in and I can gently go in and I can do some extractions on my skin. Now, what you want to know with this, when you're doing extractions, you don't want to take get right in on top of it and push it down in. It won't work. And what you want to do is get a bit underneath it and get a little bubble of skin and then rock it and rock it up. So I'm kind of creating a pinch in my skin rather and lifting and coming up underneath it. It's really a trick to do this. Many estheticians take a long time to learn this. I taught many of many people how to do this, but you want to gut around and get underneath where that blackhead is and then gently press and wiggle so that it can wiggle right up out of the skin. It takes some practice to do and I'm not really doing any real extractions because I would have to have a magnifying mirror at my age to even see my pores right now. But I'm just kind of showing you what you can do is I can spread the skin apart a little bit. I can come up underneath it and then gently move it, wiggle it back and forth until I have that coming out of the skin. If you're not confident doing this, but you know you have glued in blackheads, do this treatment at home and then go get a facial. Your esthetician will be so thankful because she'll have a much easier time getting any blackheads out of your skin. But also it just takes a little practice. And if you're not comfortable doing it with the tissue fingers, try using Q-tips. And so you use one Q-tip here, one here, and then gently press them together. So they're kind of getting underneath it, pressing together, and then wiggling to push that little bit of sebum up out of the skin. So that's your technique for removing the blackheads. Now, if you're going at one and it's not coming out, don't force it. Don't make it into a big red sore. Just leave it. I know it's so hard. It's hard for me. I'm a picker, but leave it. Keep doing these treatments. Keep using the serums that I talked about and it'll get looser and looser until finally it'll come out without using too much pressure. I don't want you guys to go in here and break capillaries and damage or hurt your skin. So just be gentle with yourself as you go through here. Get what wants to come out and leave what isn't ready to come out yet. Okay, so then we've done our nice extractions. My skin is really nice and dry. You want it really dry for this next step, no dampness. And now what we're going to do is grab the Dermazyme. Because a lot of times when you do extractions and you press stuff up out of the skin, you still have some dead skin cells that are hanging on and holding on, especially if you have really sticky sebum, you're going to have little bits of skin cells that if you had a magnifying glass, you would see them all over your skin where you haven't quite exfoliated and you're going to need to exfoliate now that you've pushed so much of that sebum up out of the skin. So Dermazyme is perfect for that. Dermazyme is an enzyme, and so you know enzyme are those Pac-Men that go around and digest away the dead, dull skin cells. So I'm just going to use one pump of this. I have to use two. I'm going to use two pumps because I just can't not use two. <laughs> and two is right. That feels about right for me. Okay. So when you first rub this onto your dry skin, it's going to feel kind of thick and heavy. And as I continue to massage it, it's going to suddenly get kind of watery. It's already doing that. It's feeling watery. And then as it turns watery, the next thing it's going to start creating, it's going to start rolling off skin cells. So right now, I don't know if you guys can see it on my fingers. See those little specks? Now it is starting to bead up. So it's beading up and it's going to pull debris and it's going to pull loose skin cells off my skin. I'm going to do this, massage it until I get it nice and gritty, and then I'm just going to let it sit and let it sit on the skin five minutes, 10 minutes. You can even come in and add a little bit of water because water reactivates enzymes and you can massage again. I just got my hands a little wet. 
I'm gonna massage one more time, working it in. And then just go about what you need to do for five, 10 minutes, leaving that on the skin. This is such a gentle enzyme that you can even use it on the delicate eye area. You can use it on your eyelids right down to the lash line and you can use it right up underneath the eyes. You can use it all over the lips. Don't forget this little spot. In the wintertime, this gets really dry and can often be chapped. So the enzyme right on that little frenulum of the nose is going to help digest away those dry skin cells in that area as well. So once your five, 10 minutes is up, go ahead and grab a nice wet and warm lush cloth. Getting one. And remove it. skin feels so good. This is one of the most wonderful things you can do for yourself as an act of self-care, self-love is doing a facial for yourself. Really enjoy it. Enjoy the textures, the warmth, the scents. Let it really nurture you. It relaxes you and relaxed people have better skin. If we're all tight and stressed and bunched up, our skin can't um, have good circulation. It's just gets thin and dry. But when we get nice and relaxed, the blood can flow better. Good things happen. <laughs> okay, final step with the things. Well, no, this could be your final step if you don't want to use retinol. But now that we've, you know, probably gotten quite a bit of the sebum loosened out of the skin. The next step is to go ahead and grab one of your retinol serums. So I'm going to grab a retinol. I've got to go out and be about all day today. So I'm going to grab stem cell A. This is a retinaldehyde with mandelic acid in it. It's excellent for brightening. It's also going to help with any pores that might be still a little bit clogged. And this is going to penetrate down into that kind of hole that we've left where we've removed the sebum. Now this retinol or retinaldehyde can really penetrate down in there, further loosen up any sticky sebum that's in the pore and also help to reduce the size of the pore. Now, because this is retinaldehyde, I can use it on my neck without having any retinol neck issues because this neck is very sensitive. You often cannot use retinol on the neck, but retinaldehyde can be used in that area. So now we've got a nice coating of retinaldehyde on the skin. Um, Celine, I know you guys have met Celine. She has the kind of skin that I'm really talking about where it's a bit oily, but it gets these hard glued in blackheads. And this retinaldehyde, the stem cell A is really one of her staples that she uses pretty much every night. It's the only corrective she uses. That means it's the only kind of acid or retinol product that she uses, and it works really well for her. Okay, now I'm going to grab, where'd it go? It's hiding from me up here. There it is. Nope, that's not it. Here it is. <laughs> it's tiny. I buried it under my Lush cloth. This is my grapeseed glow. This is that, let's see if I can get it so you guys can see it. Grapeseed Glow. Grapeseed Glow is that wonderful oil that is acne safe. And oil is good. I mean, many people think, oh, I have blackheads. I have too much oil. I don't need more oil. This is a good oil. Um, it's going to help thin that sticky oil. It's not um, comedogenic in any way. So it's, it's completely acne safe. And it's really good, too, for people who have drier skin that lack oil and they get blackheads because their skin's so dry that the oil just gets stuck in there. So I put about a pump into my hands and now I'm just gonna pat it on. Men love this as a beard oil. <laughs> it smells really wonderful and feels wonderful. 
right on the lips. And at night, you could just finish with that if you do this facial at nighttime or if you're not going outdoors at all. I am, like I said, going to be going outdoors. So I grab my Eclipse and I'm going to put a nice pump of Eclipse on top of this. So that my skin is nice and protected after all this exfoliation today. I put on a full pump, so I'm really going to be well protected. Do you guys like my necklace? This is one of the um, necklaces by my friend that lives in Kauai that many of you met, Amalia. And we have this right now. We have a limited amount. There's only a few that she's made because she really makes custom pieces. And these are on our website in the gift shop. She also made me some malas to have in the gift shop. So we have the colored mala and then the moonstone malas. I love the moon. I love both. My husband also wears this one. He's been wearing it since May, since our wedding anniversary. Um, I gave him one and he gets so many compliments on it. Even though it has a bit of a pink stone on there, it's absolutely gorgeous on him. And people everywhere stop him and ask him where he got it. And then the moonstone ones are really nice. The moonstones are a magic stone because they have their own light inside of them that um, kind of reflects, kind of like an opal does. So it's my magic, my magic bracelet. Okay, this is Eclipse. Got it well worked into the skin. So I'm protected for the whole day as I go about. And this is a beautiful base for Illuminaire Foundation. At this right at this moment, let me go grab one and I'll put some on for you guys. Here at the studio, I just have the extra coverage. So I'm actually, it's not even extra coverage. It's mattifying. So this is not the normal one that I would use, but it still goes on beautifully with this. I just use the teensy tiniest amount. You can see on there, it's just such a little bit. And then I spread it around between my fingers. See how light that is? And then I just do light dots. And work it onto my skin. And generally, I only put it on my nose area because that's where I have my larger pores. And then I have a little bit of discoloration on my cheeks. So that's pretty much the only areas I apply my foundation because I like a really natural look. I like it where people just think I have nothing on my skin. So I just like look like me, but a little bit better. So that is our facial treatment for today. Now I am ready to answer questions for you guys. And I see there's quite a few of them. So let me rinse my hands and scroll through here. Okay, towel. All right, now I can get my hands on here. Go to the top. How does this system work with Neogenesis Recovery? So this is just a facial that I've done, um, but you could put on the Neogenesis Recovery, you would put that on before you put on your retinol serum. So if you were gonna do like I talked about at night and you're gonna use skin smoothing gel and a retinol serum, and you're gonna alternate nights, you would put on your recovery serum first and then put on one of these serums. And then on those, nourishing nights when you're not exfoliating you put on a recovery serum and whatever moisturizer or balm that you like to use so recovery always um, can be used in any with any of this generally you're going to want to put it underneath the other serums jenny says i wasn't sure if hot towels were good for your skin i thought applying heat was not good it was better to use cool and tepid so that's true however I don't want to be an extremist. I don't use hot steam. I find that really dehydrates my clients. But using some nice warm towels, they should be warm enough that you can lay them on your skin without burning yourself. And it just infuses more blood through the skin. It feels really good. It softens up the skin. And especially for those people who have glued in blackheads, it's going to really help soften up that sebum in the skin. So those warm towels are going to be fine for you. 
I love nice warm towels, but you're right, Jenny, you don't want to use too hot of towels and um, not doing it too often. Doing it once a week is going to be great. Is not a problem for your skin. And even just using warm ones is not going to be a problem for you. I've even done it with people with rosacea. I just make sure if they have rosacea, I make sure the towel is a little cooler than I normally like to use for myself. But even if you have rosacea, it's good to get the blood flowing through the skin. We just don't want to overdo it. Okay, next question. I got combination oily skin I, with stubborn white heads around my chin and all around the lip area, now getting pustules on cheeks. Kindly recommend a skin routine to get rid of it to attain glowing skin. So what you need to do is reach out to Art of Skincare, go to our live chat, and either do the acne coaching or do a customized protocol or just even ask my estheticians on live chat for a very simple basic routine. They can give you that to get started on that. If you're getting little white pustules around your mouth, you probably have perioral dermatitis. So they might ask you to submit a couple pictures. And if you have that, they're going to treat it one way. Or if you just have actual acne happening, they'll treat it a different way. And so we want to do some narrowing down. If you have perioral dermatitis, we're going to have you stop using any toothpaste that has sodium, sodium lauryl sulfate in it um, or fluoride. Um, my favorite one to use is David's. When I had perioral dermatitis, I used David's toothpaste and they now have that at Target. Um, you're going to want to stay away from citrus, um, coffee, anything acidic. You want to be really careful that spicy foods, peppers, all that kind of stuff. You want to allow that skin to really calm down and you don't want to use harsh correctives because you're just further disrupting that skin barrier and it can't heal. So definitely reach out to Art Skin Care live chat. They'll help steer you in the right direction to get that cleared up. Yes, face reality products will be better. Yes, face reality products are great. We can prescribe those for you. You just need to reach out to them and they'll help you find that best um, startup face reality routine. So you just it need a little more information to know exactly what's going on on your face. Um, here we go. Mahalia's jumped in also to help you. Um, here Sarah says, what do you think of the hot then ice cold face washes that plump that pump up youthful skin. I know it is not a new thing, but what type of skin should you avoid that practice? So you can do that with any skin type. And I love that. One of my clients, he used to call it my all seasons facial because I would start all nice and warm, wrapping these warm towels on. And then I would get out this cold mask that I put on his face and I'd use these ice globes on his skin. And he would call, this is the four seasons. <laughs> facial. And it's good to do that. It does help push toxins out of the skin. We're pulling blood in, pushing blood away, and it does help to rejuvenate the skin. And it's fine to do without being too extreme. When you do your ice globes, keep them in the refrigerator. Don't keep them in the freezer. The freezer is generally too cold. If you know you have rosacea or skin that flares up and gets very red or little pustules from from rosacea, then calm it down. Don't be so extreme. Use a warm towel and then use your cool ice globe without it being icy cold. Take it out of the refrigerator a little bit, let it warm up just a little bit. So you don't have to be too extreme to get the results that you want. And then here we go. Um, Jenny says she's using skin scrub retinol glycolic pads. Are they a good form of retinol? I love them. So there are a lot of people that are addicted to those pads and love those pads. Um, they are good for anybody with really oily skin and blackheads, and they also help to lift off dark pigmentation. However, using them long term because of that glycolic acid in there, you know, those are really astringent. It can be very dehydrating. And when your skin gets dehydrated, it's going to get more reactive. So you may have more problems with hyperpigmentation. Um, it may lead to more problems with blackheads getting stuck in because the skin is going to get over dried. You just have to be careful with them. I do have some clients with just the oiliest of skin and they can use those every day. 
without any problems. It all depends on your skin type. And Jenny, if you're concerned with putting really hot things on your skin, I would be more concerned with using that glycolic and retinol together on your skin. I think that would be more aging than using a hot towel for sure. So you might want to just gently move on <laughs> from those. Younger people, stronger, really resilient skin, really rough textured, um, tough skin does great with those. Um, otherwise, I would steer away or only use them once a, once a week for a little extra exfoliation, something like that. Um, let's see, we've got, do peptides clog pores? No, peptides do not clog pores. What you put the peptides in can clog pores. So it's really important to go to our artskincare.com, go to our Learn Center. And in the acne lessons, there is an article that lists all the ingredients that cause clog pores or increase acne or aggravate the skin and cause acne. So you'll want to go through that list. Most people print that list out and keep it with them. Uh, maybe take a picture of it on your phone. That could be difficult. It's hard to take a picture of a screen. Um, at some point, it would be nice if we get a PDF available of that. I'll work on that. Um, but you want to have that list and check that list. A lot of products with peptides are made to be anti-aging. And for some reason, the companies out there, when they're working on anti-aging products, they put the heaviest um, oils and waxes and creams in there because they're just trying to really hide <laughs> aging and blur it. I saw, um, I think it was on YouTube or Instagram, a quick video go by of a woman putting on aquaphor on her neck and showing before and after her neck with aquaphor on it. And I was just kind of saddened because yeah, you could put aquaphor on there. You can put these heavy, greasy things on there, but all you're doing is blurring it. You're not actually feeding the skin or helping the skin to be more resilient, to be firmer and have good skin in the future. You're just occluding it. And when you occlude the skin, it's just going to get more saggy over time. It's not going to be helpful for it. So using Aquaphor as your neck cream, I'm not for that. Um, so just looking at peptides, look at the ingredients that are in the serum or the moisturizer that you're using and make sure that they are acne safe. Um, Jenny says, can you recommend a good retinol for me? You're using Emma Pell but you can take more. So Jenny, start putting on Rhonda Allison's Retinol Supreme. This one, this is what I'm doing because I'm on my second year of Emma Pell and I put Retinol Supreme on underneath the Emma Pell night cream. So try doing that. You might try, you might find that you can do that every night or you might try that you do that some nights underneath, just kind of, you know, really watch your skin and see what your skin likes. Sarah says, what's the difference between hydrosols and fragrance ingredients? And how do we know or identify names on the ingredient list if a hydrosol or fragrance? So hydrosols will generally say it's a hydrosol. Celine can pop in here. She's our ingredient expert. And if she's listening in, she can pop on. But generally, a fragrance is going to say fragrance on it. And that's how you know it's a fragrance and not a hydrosol. The problem is sometimes some things will list plant things like lavender oil. If they're listing it as an oil, like a lavender oil, you know they're using a fragrance from natural lavender, but it's an oil derivative. And that can be okay, but sometimes it can be aggravating for some people's skin. And so in general, we're finding more and more that we're moving towards hydrosols for those fragrances. Um, ben can look up for me. Look up um, Botnia's hydrosols and tell me how they are listing the ingredient on there. You can go and look at that. You guys can look at the hydrosols and see how are they listing that ingredient. Not all companies are inky. Inky is a standard that we set for how we list ingredients. And I'm not sure what the inky standard is for hydrosols. So let's see what Ben finds out, and then we'll come back. <laughs> he can't get a connection to the internet. <laughs> if Lauren's on here or Celine, they could pipe in and help with that. Okay, Sierra says, oh, no, we got that. And then Jenny removed a message. I think we made it through all the questions. 
able to get on? No. We're just waiting. Hand me my cell phone. Maybe my cell phone yeah. will get there. We have the same cell phone, though, so probably if you can't, then I can't. I think we're hogging all the internet bandwidth You doing our video today. But I'm going to try looking here, going to Art of Skincare. Oh, here we go. We'll see who finds it first. <laughs> oh, yeah, I can see he was having a problem. So you're if you're there too. already, <laughs> I'm just white screen. Oh, yeah, that's what I was doing. Okay, here we go. So it does say hydrosol. It says hydrosol. Yep, it does. So it's got that lavender, but it says lavender hydrosol. So I would look for that. If it says lavender oil, you know it's not a hydrosol. If it says fragrance, you know that's not a hydrosol. I would actually look for the word hydrosol in there. Many skincare companies are using, they'll list like Rhonda will even list. Let me look on hers. Bring up Rhonda's glow serum right here. Glow, glow, grapeseed glow. He's going to bring that up for me. So grapeseed glow, I think she's just, is she listing it as... Like she's got clove in there. Is she listing it as clove oil or just listing clove? It's, yeah, it's clove leaf oil. Clove leaf oil. So she's listing clove leaf oil, but sometimes you will just see that name, lavender. And if it doesn't say hydrosol, I would assume that they're using an essential oil to do that. Many of these essential oils are can be very strong and can even be harsh. They're used as preservatives. So a lot of times Rhonda Allison will use those essential oils as preservatives in a very small amount so that it doesn't irritate the skin. We don't have, I haven't seen any skin reactions or irritation from grapeseed glow. Rhonda does a really amazing job refining her oils so that they are good even for sensitive skin. So I hope that helps answer your question some. Hydrosols will say hydrosol. Artificial fragrance is going to say fragrance. Um, we do know um, like Sorella used to just say fragrance on their products. And we'd get so many people saying it, is that artificial fragrance? And we'd have to say, no, it's not artificial fragrance. They weren't being inky correct. They didn't actually list the, um, the essential oils that they were using in there to um, create that scent. And so now they have changed. And many of Sorella's projects products don't say fragrance anymore. They'll actually list the plant ingredient that's there. So sometimes you just got to reach out to the company and ask them, what, well, what is that? Is that an oil? Is that a lavender oil? What, what are you using in that? And then they can tell you. Hydrosol, distilling hydrosols is not cheap. It's a more expensive way of working with the plants, but it's beautiful. And Botnia makes all their own hydrosols and they are really beautiful. We have, we're just um, selling out of our 12 hands hydrosol. There's a bit left and then we'll be moving on to their winter, which is going to be juniper. Every winter they do juniper because they love that juniper scent as kind of the Christmassy woodsy scent. And it is really nice. So that will be coming up soon after we've sold out of our 12 hands. Okay, I think we did it. We answered all the questions. Okay, you guys, it's been a wonderful day. Really fun. I'm glad to have been able to give myself a facial this afternoon. My skin feels great. <laughs> I was going to do a facial on someone else, but it uh, didn't work out. And um, so I'm glad I got to do it with you guys today. So have a wonderful day, and I'll see you all again next week on Tuesday. Take care.